Welcome Battletech enthusiasts. Um, today we're going to speed paint House Imara. I started off by painting a uh, awesome, although here I'm kind of still learning how to do it here on this thing, and then I tried to decided to try to see if I could scale the painting technique to mass paint a large number. Um, I was able to do the camo job on a company of Davian mechs in roughly two hours of my personal time. Uh, here, by the way, you can see the awesome next to the glass. Now it's been replaced by this Agrax Earthshade in this time lapse here. Um, but that uh, was the model or my prototype, my first painted job. Now here, all I'm doing is just slabbering on huge amounts of um, my khaki color, which is actually a Ushab bone. I'm going straight. Um, it's it's. Sometimes I have lightly thinned it, and sometimes I am putting it on straight from the uh, paint pot. And then I let it dry, and then I do a second coat. This is what it looks like right now. I just uh, have these badly blue painted mechs, um, and it was just uh, absolutely horrible. So I basically painted over it with shop bone. Now I'm doing black on all cockpits, guns, and jump jet vents. This is a pre, this is an under layer, so, um, but I need it for this technique to work. And one of the advantages of mass painting is that um, you don't have to switch paints and brushes all the time. It's like you're basically using, you're just applying huge amounts of paint using the same brush over and over again. And that's how it scales. Instead of having to clean brushes and switch paints and um, change what you're doing, you just follow a routine. And it turns out it scales very well. Here I'm doing all missile surfaces, all cockpit glass, and any guns that uh, have been overwritten by the, uh, by the rebase coating of these mechs, as well as any, um, basically any uh, jump jet vents. So I'm not being excessively careful because this is an underlayer, and I will later on I will just um, retouch up with a very fine brush for places where I messed up and overwrote the Ushab T-bone color, um, and as well as the uh, green arms and legs. I basically painted with Liao green, which I made from two shades of green color that I describe in the. Uh, awesome house imara awesome painting tutorial um but basically all the arms and legs the outer the upper the lower arm and low and the outer lower leg of every uh mech has been painted this liao green and the rest of the mech is painted ushab t-bone and now i'm doing the uh again just going through everything here in fairly rapid fire succession. Um, now, if I look at all the time I spent and all the time compression on the length of this video, it equates to about three hours of personal time. Um, now, it took me half an hour to paint one mech, and it took me three hours to paint, I think this is like 12 or 13 mechs here, I have to actually look to see how many there are, but basically it's a maybe it's even uh may have even been sixteen mechs. It was it's basically a full company of uh mechs, so it's probably I think it might be four lances. Um but anyway, you don't have to pay attention too much. You just get it on the cockpit, black out the cockpit, black all the guns that have been overridden, uh, etc. Later on, you will pu I will put um, gunmetal on that, and then I will wash that with Agrax Earthshade. And here, you can see I'm even doing some vents, just some, uh, there, there was like some grill-like vents, and I wanted to, to uh, do those as well, just to give a little more color accent here. And here, of course, the uh, charger is being worked on here. I have two chargers, so there's like a second charger here too as well. They're identical in every way. Uh, they're both metal mechs. These are all metal mechs, I believe, except for like one of the cataphracts is plastic, and like 
maybe one or two other mechs are plastic and the others are all metal. So anyway, this is what it looks like now. It's black, um, Liao green, and the Ushapti bone. Now I'm going to, see I thin my metal paints. And this thinning is very important. You only add a little water. It'll, the, the metal paint will settle quickly in the water, so you have to keep re-stirring it. But it makes a really cool effect when painted over black. Yeah, um, especially uh, because it, you can make it as silvery or blackish as you want based on how much you thin your metal. Um, so I suggest you, and you see here I have to kind of constantly mix it every once in a while, and that's because if you don't, it'll settle fairly quickly. After just painting one mech or even half a mech, it's, uh, it's already settled. Um, but anyway, you can kind of see the black through it. Again, if you're if you were using gold for some reason instead of silver, then you would want to undercoat with brown. Now, on these House Imara mechs, I will be adding gold accents, and normally I would underpaint with brown if I'm using gold, but I decided that I got a really good look just with the Ushabti bone straight. So I don't put black under the gold. I just paint it directly onto the Ushabti bone, and it looks fine. Um, if I was like painting figurines, like miniature people or like gold treasure or something like that, then I would use a brown underlayer. This is what it looks like now. There's still underwork here. Next stage here, I'm adding gold accents. You can see here, I've decided that basically all the shoulder type protrusions and hip protrusions are going to become gold. And then a few other minor accent points are going to be gold. And those are going to be like the little head wings on Hermes 2 and a little spot on the top of a cicada's head. Otherwise, it's the same pattern. And once you've decided that this is the pattern you're going to do, it goes pretty quickly. Oh, one of these, um, uh, one of those vindicators is actually a really old lead one, so it's all rounded and soft. It's not, uh, it's not like the other one, which is more of a more modern cast. Uh, that was actually a Blackjack 2 clan. Um, I just didn't, I only had one Blackjack for the uh, House Imara, so I threw in a Blackjack 2 clan there and just pretend it's a Blackjack 1 when I need to. Uh, maybe I'll end up getting another Blackjack and just getting rid of that Imara Blackjack 2 or maybe selling it or something. I don't know. But anyway, this um, I was pretty pleased with the fact that this scaled. And when you're mass painting, uh, the color schemes are a lot easier to kind of match. And because you already have decided that I'm going to paint the top tips of the shoulder pads and the, and the hips gold. And you don't have to think when you switch to the next mech. Otherwise, you're... Like constant, whenever you're, you're painting a miniature, you're constantly thinking, hmm, should I paint this panel this color, or should I paint this, like, where should I stop the color line? And that kind of goes into autopilot mode when you do a parallel painting. So it not only does it look better, it's also easier to do than to paint one by one, and it takes a lot less time. So it's a net win. So my conclusion now, and, and this is a fairly complex three-color, tricolor base color with a metallic paint as one of the tricolor bases with the Liao green, the Ushabti bone, and the um, glorious gold accents. Uh, three colors for base colors is, uh, pretty, uh, is pretty fancy. Normally, you'd only have like maybe one or two colors, and three colors is sort of like the maximum before things start looking ugly and messy. Now, that's base colors. That does not count detailing, such as cockpits, guns, uh, little color touch-ups, washes, highlights, things like that. that so when I'm saying tri three colors for base color, that just means the main base without details. That's the, uh, And I don't consider these gold accents to actually be details. I consider these part of it, the base color scheme. Um, those details would be things that you might add, for example, after the wash. And so anyway, if you 
want to see this in slower action and getting better detail on the individual brush strokes, then you want to look at my awesome paint job for the Housimara Awesome. Um, these are now looking like this. They're getting along further. They're still not, it's still a bunch of work to go. Now I'm doing the wash. This is an Agrax Earth shade, and it looks different wet than it does dry. So it's going to have like this really wet appearance initially, which I actually kind of like, but it's a little too shiny. Then later when it dries, that shine goes away, and it's like it has a matte appearance with the cracks between panels being highlighted. On the original Awesome that I painted, the first one that I painted with Halsey Mara colors, um, some of the detail is wiped out a little bit because the uh, original paint job that I painted over, I did not strip it um, because it was a relatively thin paint job, but on second thought, I probably should have stripped it. But none of these are stripped either, and these came out better. It's possible that I just got better at this because that was the first attempt at this house. And so now, now that I just did that, I actually started three mechs originally. I started the awesome uh, plastic blackjack, which is one of the few plastic mechs I have uh, in here. And there was like some other mech that I also did at the same time. And so I started those three in parallel initially. Um, I stopped after the Ushabti bone layer. I completed the awesome, uh, posted that video as the awesome prototype for this house. And then I proceeded to mass paint all my other mechs that I wanted for that house um, in this scheme. And so now this is what it looks like now. Still, we're not done yet. This is just, this is pre-detailing. So you can see the cockpits are all black and some of the guns are washed out. Um, but it's getting closer to what it's supposed to look like. Now I'm doing cockpits. This is this turbo torque uh, crystal cave, although I think it's actually called Crystal Cavern. And I'm basically doing all cockpits and all energy weapon tips. And I'm kind of just touching up. And it starts off looking white when it initially goes down. And the paint itself looks white. But that's just the uh, scattering. Um, it, it When you paint a thin layer or when it dries on a black undercoating, it looks like a glowy blue color even though it looks nothing like it right now. It looks like a white color, but it'll look like a glowing blue if you do a thin layer on top of a black undercoat. Here you can kind of see this this assassin. You can see a little bit of it it's trying to show, even when I do my initial strokes. Later as it dries, it'll become more and more blue looking. You can see it on the left edge of the camera view there. You can see the cockpit there. Okay, here the cicada is getting its action here. So slowly but surely, here's this, uh, this cataphract here getting some action. The back tip, the lasers in the back and the rear torsos are getting the tips of them hit with this crystal cavern too. And that's basically approaching done. I might touch up a little bit somewhere here or there, but that's kind of good enough already for tabletop. So this is now what it looks like. I'm gonna accept this as is. Again, because I do not do dry brushing or highlights. It saves a lot of time. It only makes it like 5% better. So by uh, basically it's kind of diminishing returns. So I skip that and I stop with the detailing after the wash step. My next video is either going to be a drop ship or some battle troops. I haven't uh, decided which one I'll do next yet, but um, I basically got this dropship on eBay. It's a 3D printed thing, except it came in horrible condition, like the legs were all broken and the the engine section is broken, so I'll have to work on it a bit. So in any case, if you want to um, get notified when I have that ready, subscribe, and um, then you will see that video when it comes out.